Hey everybody, welcome back to The Wolf Pit with another episode of What Are We Eating? Today I'm going to be trying one of my favorite authentic Chinese foods of all time that's not even authentic, and that's chow mein. This is authentic chow mein, which chow mein means stir-fried noodles. This is Hong Kong chow mein, which is not authentic chow mein, because these noodles are deep fried versus stir-fried. Remember the chow in chow mein means stir fried, and of course, the mein is the noodles. But then you have what I like to call the East Coast version of chow mein, which is neither stir fried or noodles. It's more of a chop suey or a stew. But if you order chow mein on the East Coast from 95% of the restaurants, this is what you're gonna get. You're gonna get a box of the steamed rice, a box of the stewed meat and vegetables, and a little baggie of sliced and deep fried wonton or egg roll wrappers. And this is what I was referring to when I said this is one of my all time favorite authentic, unauthentic Chinese dishes growing up. And still to this day as a matter of fact. To me, it's very delicious, but it's an Americanized bastardization of Hong Kong chow mein, which isn't even chow mein. Either way, it's delicious and I love it. But then back in the 1940s, Chungking was established. By an Italian, of course. His name was Gino Pellucci. And if that name sounds familiar, have you ever heard of a Gino's pizza roll or Gino's frozen pizza and snacks? Well, that's the same person. Gino's brands of products was eventually acquired by no other than Totino's. Since I'm already going off base on this video and I'm gonna continue to go more off base in a minute, do you notice at the top right-hand corner of the Totino's bag, it says new air fryability, which is a pretty moot statement because an air fryer is simply a convection oven. So if you can cook these in the oven, they already had the air fry ability. So the next time you have a bag of a Totino's pizza rolls, think Gino Pellucci. Not to be confused with the Baltimore Colts defensive end Gino Marchetti, who established Gino's Hamburgers and Chicken in Dundalk, Maryland in 1957, and later on introduced us to our favorite Kentucky Colonel. So back to Gino Pellucci. He realized that people were tired of eating the same thing every week and they wanted a new variety. So he started canning chop suey and chow mein under the Chung King name. And Gino was right. It was different and it was delicious and my family had it probably once a week when I was growing up. In 1966, Gino sold the Chung King brand to RJ Reynolds Tobacco. RJR merged with Nabisco in 1985 to become RJR Nabisco and then in 1989, sold off the Chung King brand, which was later sold to Hunt Wesson in 1995. Owner of the Chinese food brand, La Choi. Conagra, the owner of Hunt Wesson, eventually phased out the Chung King brand. If you remember a couple years ago, I did a video on the La Choi chicken chow mein, and the one thing that stood out was it smelled like feet. So today we're gonna try the La Choi beef chow mein to see if it's any different, and maybe it will be, and it'll smell like hands instead of feet. The 42 ounce can or cans of beef chow mein cost $4.82. But you can't have beef chow mein without the fake extruded chow mein noodles, which costs another $1.46 for a five ounce can. So the price is starting to add up, especially if you have it over a little bit of rice, which is the way we always had it. Beef chow mein, authentic Asian style flavor. What is authentic Asian style flavor? And if you're not familiar with this, the beef and the sauce are in the small can and the vegetables are in the big can. So you can see the majority of what you're paying for is vegetables. Serve over rice or with la choy chow mein noodles. If you decide to try this, I recommend you invest the 90 cents in getting a bag of rice because you're gonna go hungry if you just eat the beef chow mein and the noodles. Here's the list of ingredients in the vegetables and the sauce. And believe it or not, the seasoned cooked beef is real pieces of meat. No form meat slurry concoctions here. And the ingredient list is much simpler and not nearly as bad as I thought it would be. Between the two cans, there's three one cup servings of beef chow mein. Each serving has 110 calories, one gram of total fat, no saturated fat, no trans fat, 15 milligrams of cholesterol, 1,390 milligrams of sodium, 16 grams of carbohydrates, three grams of fiber, six grams of sugars, and eight grams of protein. Now we can't forget about our extruded chow mein noodles. Just add your favorite protein and la choy marinade for a delicious Asian style meal. Here's the ingredients in the chow mein noodles. 
Per five ounce can, there's five half cup servings. Each serving has 130 calories, five grams of total fat, one and a half grams of saturated fat, no trans fat, no cholesterol, 250 milligrams of sodium, 19 grams of carbohydrates, two grams of fiber, no sugars, and three grams of protein. And the smell of feet in the vegetables wasn't nearly as bad as it was in the chicken chow mein. So the instruction said to drain and rinse off the vegetables. So that's what we did. And the vegetables are predominantly bean sprouts, which I don't mind at all, because I love bean sprouts. Once the vegetables are drained and thoroughly mixed, add them into a saucepan, followed by the can of meat and sauce. I call that more of a gravy than a sauce. Once the sauce or the gravy or whatever you like to call it is poured in, give it a good mix and then heat over medium heat until heated through. After five minutes, it was thoroughly heated through and it was ready to eat. And at first glance, it looks like a pot of ramen. So we're gonna serve it over a bed of white rice and the chow mein noodles. And you can use as many or as little as you like. If you don't have rice or the chow mein noodles or you choose not to use them, you can use any kind of noodles or pasta you like. If you use pasta or other noodles, I would recommend cooking the noodles or pasta first and then mixing the sauce, the vegetables, and the pasta all together. You can eat it as is with the noodles or the pasta or pour it over top of a hamburger bun and have a Fall River chow mein sandwich, which would technically be called a Fall River Hong Kong style chow mein sandwich. And that's because chow mein means stir fried noodles and the chow mein noodles in a Fall River chow mein sandwich are fried until crispy. They're not stir fried. Either way, it's a weird but delicious sandwich if you want to see how to make it, I'll leave a link in the description box. So now that we have our rice and chow mein noodles on the plate, it's time to add the beef, sauce, and vegetables. And then for a little bit of extra crunch, add more chow mein noodles. Now it's time to give it a try. So we tried the beef first. And it didn't look too bad to me, but it sure did make my lips pucker when it went into my mouth. It had a very strong beefy and salty flavor. Just imagine biting into a beef bouillon cube, a little bit overpowering on its own. Maybe it'll tone down once we try it with everything else. Then we tried a water chestnut and a piece of baby corn. Both were good, still had some crisp to them, though it was lacking a little bit of flavor from the sauce. Next, we got a big old heaping spoonful of the vegetables, sauce, beef, and the chow mein noodles. And it actually doesn't look too bad. But again, this is more of a chop suey than it is a chow mein. But it was at this moment the nostalgia kicked in. Does nostalgia have a flavor? Because this isn't very good, but it's delicious and I love it. But I'm just wondering if it's the memories of eating this as a kid is the reason I like it. Because like I said, it's pretty bland but those little bits of over-seasoned beef explode into your mouth and season each spoonful. And the crunchiness from the extruded fried chow mein noodles just sends it over the top for me. But like I said, if you eat it as is, just with the chow mein noodles, you're gonna starve to death. You gotta add the rice to make it more filling. And the rice just totally completes the meal. There's absolutely no wow factor with this meal. And I did not expect a wow factor, but I couldn't stop eating it. I loved it but I did have to make myself stop eating it. Otherwise, I would have consumed two days worth of sodium in one meal. Even though I really enjoyed doing this video and I loved the food, I don't think this meal is for everyone, unless you grew up eating it as a kid like I did. So I guess nostalgia does have a flavor after all. Thank you all very much for watching and I'll see you soon.